Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. Let's roll it back immediately to the giant cookie cup. Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> One of the craziest giant foods ever. But actually in the comments, loads of you were like, oh, it's such a big waste of your food. But what a lot of people don't realize is that that cookie cup was actually breaking. Um, if we did leave it for another like two minutes, all the milk was just gonna fall out of it. So we quickly both uh, downed the milk. And it was quite funny looking back with the whole ice bucket challenge and food wastage was not intended whatsoever. As you guys know, most of the giant foods get given away anyway. But the theory for that video actually originated from standard size cookie shots, which we're gonna make today, which I am very, very excited about. And there's actually a way that you guys can evolve another follow-up video to this. I'll explain that in just a jiffy. But one thing I did trial, uh, this was one mold that I got online. I wanted to actually test the theory, okay, of, of seeing if it would work. Um, I made the cookie shots, stuck them in here, wrapped it in foil to try and protect it because online it didn't actually say if it was oven safe. None of them do. Um, and it melted like that and the cookie shots, they didn't cook at all so that was it with it wrapped in foil as well but apparently uh, these by Wilton should work this isn't a sponsored video in any shape or form but uh, Wilton did reach out quite recently about doing a video but at the time I was like no it's okay I like to keep them minimal all right uh, but maybe I'll do a video with them sometime but apparently this one should work so let's do it. So if you are not already inside uh, myvirginkitchen.com, uh, if you want to see the full epic write-up by moi uh, and my personal feelings of it, plus the link to that mold, uh, check out uh, myvirginkitchen.com. Alrighty then, so here is our mixing bowl. Uh, I've just given this silicon thing a wash, but we'll put that to one side for the moment. We're gonna make our cookie mix. That is some uh, butter. It's not at room temperature yet. It's been out about two minutes from the fridge, but it's so hot in here, it should melt quite quick. White sugar, light brown sugar. It's that classic cookie combo. So all we're gonna do, you can actually do this with an electric whisk if you like, is just start to beat this together. This, see, that butter is like breaking down already. Look at these clumps just coming off it. So just gonna beat that and cream it into this fluffy. Because it's such a hot day, this isn't taking long at all. But as I say, um, if you link it a little bit more room temperature butter or just cream it with an electric whisk, if you're in a hurry. There we go, that didn't take long. Uh, it's all nice and creamed together now. And also make sure it's not gritty as well. You know when you beat um, sugar together with butter, it can feel like quite, I guess like sand. You don't want that, you want it to be nice and smooth. And I can feel that now, I can feel it. I feel it in my spoon. Yeah. We're now gonna drop in, <laughs> yeah, an egg. In case you didn't know what that was. Beat this through. If you're using extracts at the moment, so you could do like a maybe a cheeky orange flavor extract. You could go for the classic vanilla. You could do a mint vibe one, uh, add that now, but I'm not doing that today. The pure reason for that, and I was really mulling over going for an orange one with a chocolate orange vibe. You guys know how much I love that. Our house is a mess and I can't find it. I didn't want to unnecessarily spend money on vanilla extract when I know we've got about four tubs somewhere in a plastic box in here. <laughs> there we go. Nice wet mixture now. We're gonna add in a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda, AKA baking soda. This uh, is my salt pot, which caused a huge debate on the latest gadget video because I went for that one because it's got one hole in its head, okay? Just a little bit of salt in there. Do, 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 do. Obviously the Amy one has three holes, which I've always known that to be pepper, but obviously with that being a white pug, pepper should have, salt should have gone in there and pepper in that one, but hey ho, it's up to you, innit? And this is some plain flour. Not even sifting it, it's just going straight in. All right, so let's just bring it together. I always get that fear whenever I add flour to a cookie mix. It's like, whoa, that's way too much. But let's just start a mix slow so we don't have a huge avalanche all over the countertop. And it should start to incorporate together. Now, if you find that it is a teeny bit dry, which it shouldn't be, it was just still mixing through. You can always add a splash of milk, but this quantity and this ratio has uh, never failed me in the past, so uh, we're getting there. So I'm not gonna go too chocolate chip heavy uh, at this stage. This is about 80 grams uh, of chocolate chips. And let's just oh, stir that through, randomize it, get the chocolate chips in there. Amazing sight. Believe it or not, well, hopefully you do believe it because it's right in front of your eyes, that is our cookie dough all done. I know your dogs. I just wanna point out that I'm really jealous of you right now. All right, so now you need your washed silicon shot glassy mold thing. 
in Boston has just taken a nice sort of uh, resting place by uh, Michael Jackson's white sock and slipper combo. So I'm getting a spoon of it, a little teaspoon, and then using uh, the non-sharp end of a bamboo skewer. And I'm just going to push it down into it. This is probably going to take quite a while, um, but you get the idea. I think the main thing here is to ensure that it does go all the way down, which as I say, in fact, you probably got a better view than I have of that at the moment. Just need to, I'm really gonna ram it in there, make sure that it's sealed all the way around. So I can sort of see from the sides there that it is pretty much there. I'm just gonna probably push it down, just encourage it a bit more. So just sort of, I guess, rod it, like you're working on the drains. To be fair, I'm finding it much, much easier to do it with my finger like that. Just got to make sure it's relatively flush. So I've got to the top, and I say I might be a teeny bit too high on this one, because there is quite a gap between the stump in the middle, which forms the core, and then that bit there. But that's okay, we could probably cut it flush or something. But more importantly, I'm really, really happy with that. We get to sort of see what it's roughly going to look like now. So let's jump and do the rest of them, or however much my batter will give me. So they're all done. I've got enough cookie dough left to probably make about another four, but um, look at that. I've uh, done my best to fill them up. Hopefully it will work. Sitting them on a baking tray, we're now going to put them in the oven. So normal cookies take about 10 to 12 minutes normally. We're going to push that to almost double that to make sure they're nice and cooked through. So around about 20 minutes plus. I think I have made them quite high to the top, so no doubt I will have to scrape them off, but we'll find out. Originally today I was going to do some cheesecake shots and I was going to put like a cheesecakey filling and blueberries and stuff and I thought, oh, that's pretty darn awesome. But that's just my opinion. So I wanted to know what yours was. And I've already teased this on Twitter and had some amazing ideas. So I tweeted, uh, random question, uh, but what should we make with these shot moulds? Um, and incidentally, that was the shot mould that didn't work. I had loads of cool replies. I like this one from Derek about bread egg cups. Beth says chocolate shot glasses with Baileys. Damien, Yorkshire pudding and beef. Anella said about doing dog treat ones. I really like the idea of that. Pancake one is strong. Pancake glasses filled with maple syrup and capped with chocolate. There are like loads more, but uh, that was it. That was just from going out to Twitter just very, very quickly. So rather than just my thoughts, it's yours too. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, leave me a comment down below. If you're on the website, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, I want to collect maybe three or four of my favorite ones and then just do like these amazing video of just these custom shots. So I think it'd be really, really fun. Let me know. Right then, it's been 25 minutes. Uh, please do not let this little look you're about to see put you off. They've gone nice and browned, but um, the heads have gone blah. But it's fine, we've got to cut it flush anyway. Ah! <laughs> Love oak work surfaces and red hot pans. Ah! <laughs> Obviously, they are going to be really delicate while they are still warm. As it cools down, it's going to get more and more strength. But we can still cut this flush. This is a perfect time. So I'm just having this little tray to one side. Uh, and I'm just going to... All right. I'm just going to go flush. And just cut off a lid. Hopefully, yes, that'll do. We've got a nice base in there. Yes, this is good, this is good. I'm liking this. I feel like I'm giving them a haircut, but these actually make ah, pretty good cookies. Don't waste them. Right, flash decision, this is optional, but I am just gonna put this in the oven just for maybe just a couple more minutes just to try and brown these tops a teeny bit more. Um, it's, I don't think it's essential, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh. These are pretty good though. Mm. Okay, I don't know if that made much of a difference, but all I'm gonna do now is let this fully cool down to room temperature before putting it in my freezer. That's gonna help both firm it up to make it easier to get out of the molds, that's why we didn't grease them, but also we're gonna put a lining of chocolate in just like the giant one so that it will hopefully stop the milk setting and with them being cold, it should um, make the chocolate set quicker. So you don't really need to see any of that. Just know that I'm gonna put these in the freezer to firm up. Something exciting's just happened, folks. Remember my first cookbook? Yeah, this one, Dinner's On, uh, which a lot of people would say, Barry, that looks nothing like you on the front cover. I promise it was. It's like the highlight stage. But this, cha-ching, uh, is my new cookbook. Uh, that's also available now on Amazon to pre-order. So if you could please pre-order, it would mean the world to me. Uh, it would really support me and just all stuff like that. Seriously though, I could not do it without your support. So thank you so, so much. Anyhow, back to cookie shots. Alrighty, boom, straight out the freezer then. 
nice and rock hard. We're going to take them out initially and then put them back in. We were just doing that to get them to hold their shape at first. <gasps> oh my gosh. <gasps> Do it delicately. Come on now. Oh, it's actually quite a tough mold too. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh no. <laughs> it's stuck. Come on, mate. You can do it. Oh, there you go. Oh, yes. Look at that. That's amazing. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. The best way to get it out is to push your thumb into the recess that's already there and that just comes out like so. And then you get the, li the little cavity bit that wants to stay in there, little pinch and twist. Ooh. Pops out like a dream. Look at that. <laughs> that looks a bit weird. To make them a little bit more easy to stand like that, I've just given it a little rub like that because some of them are still a teeny bit wonky. So if you want to, you can break it down like that. They're still a little firm for that. There'll be room temperature later. It'll probably be easier then. Back in the freezer for now, we'll get our chocolate ready. I'm gonna melt my chocolate um, in Bain-Marie style, but I'm not even gonna use um, a bowl. I'm gonna use a casserole lid just because I want a nice bit of shallow depth on it. Chocolate chips in there, but the name Bain-Marie reminds me of someone called Marie that's been banned from a nightclub. True story. There we go. That is going to melt up like a dream. I'm also using that because our large mixing bowl, I don't know where it's gone, so I have to use that. The other mixing bowls are too small to go on that pan. So as you can see here, first thing I'm going to do is I've just got a pile of the chocolate here and I'm just pushing the chocolate in, spinning it around, duh, 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 duh. kind of like when you get a shot of tequila, you know, when you lick the glass, I think it's tequila, and you have the salt around the edge of it. It's kind of like that. This is like a real nice depth for it because it's not letting it go too much. But of course you could coat the whole thing in chocolate. You could do white chocolate or you could mix it up. Boom. Let's bring those back in. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour chocolate into that. See, like this. So this chocolate, let me tell you folks, from the time that I head butted a, a giant chocolate tea cake. Oh. Chocolate is very, very strong. You could probably build your house with it, but all I've done with the bamboo skewer there, and because it's cold, it's actually starting to grip to it immediately. That's important. You don't want to run down the sides. Uh, that is uh, gonna act as a shield for our milk. So I'm gonna put this one in the freezer and do these two now. So about half a teaspoon of chocolate should do it. You only need a very, very thin layer. Probably get it to seal the base most importantly, and then just bring it up, letting it cling to the sides. If you really wanted to cover your butt, you could like let it set and then do a double layer of chocolate or again, like white chocolate, then milk. Oh my gosh. All right, let's add in our milk. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Check that out. I'm gonna have the shot right now, but I've decided I'm gonna get a cardboard cutout of my book somewhere to join Michael the Queen and Homer Simpson, which is on his way any minute now. But here we go. Could have done with something stronger than milk, really, but um, Bailey's would be phenomenal in there. Look, look, look. <laughs> oh, that is truly phenomenal because as it comes back from room temperature after being frozen, it's kind of like soft and chewy. You've got the chocolate hit plus the milk before it. So, so good. Oh, and a little milky residue at the bottom. Amazing. There we are then folks. So importantly, don't forget to let me know your dream shot combination and I'll pick my favorite for a future video. Don't forget to subscribe for regular recipes and food fun and follow me on social media for behind the scenes bits and bobs. That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Boom. Now where's my Jägermeister?